welcome to the Redeemed Worship Center. Thank you so much for tuning in. We just love to have you guys all together as a family. Even though we may not be in the same place, we're together in spirit. Amen. So this morning we're going to have some worship and we just want to encourage you guys to just sing out to God, the God who we serve. We just want you to sing out, worship with your families and let's just get into his presence this morning.
seated on the throne. We crown you now with many crowns. You reign victorious. You are high and lifted up. Jesus, Son of oh God, the darling of heaven, crucified. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Yes, Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this time that we've had in worship, oh God. We just want to thank you that your promises are yes and amen, oh God, Lord. We just want to thank you that each and every day that you are fighting on our behalf, oh God, Lord, even when we don't see it, oh Lord. We want to thank you for the blessings in advance, oh God, Lord. We want to thank you for the praises and the blessings that you've already showered on your people, oh God, Lord. And we don't ever want to take it for granted, oh God. We just want to worship you for who you are, oh God. And we just want to pray that this morning, oh God, that you may have your way. Even as the word comes to us, oh God, Lord, make our hearts receptive to your word, oh God, Lord. Deliver a word this in season, oh God. We just want to pray that you have your way. Take control, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. you so much this morning I, I want to start this service this morning with a prayer <clears throat> um, shall we pray Heavenly Father we come before your throne the throne of mercy this morning Lord we humble ourselves Lord we pray Lord that you create a plain field this morning in this place that I and those that are watching and listening may have time to rejoice and to praise and to worship you Lord from the in depth of our hearts but I pray that uh, this morning it be you that regulate our emotions and that we we are able to listen from you to hear from above Lord um, above everything else in the mighty name of Jesus, reveal yourself in your word, Lord. Consecrate your word. Let your presence dwell in this place. Let your presence that makes all the difference dwell in this place, Lord. And anoint your servant that, Lord, he may utter what benefits your flock and what will only benefit the church. 
and fill us with your love, Lord, for there is nothing that we can do without your love. Father, this morning I humble myself and allow your spirit, Lord, to use me, use me in a mighty way. And I pray for your people all over the world, whoever has been blessed to listen to this way this morning, to receive a greater portion of anointing so that they can benefit from this word that comes from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, this morning is a, is a privilege for me to uh, speak profoundly um, on what I delight on and on what I consider as probably the, the most important ministry in our service uh, because we serve a living God. Um, before I uh, delve into the word this morning, I, I just want to just a little bit talk about um, <clears throat> about the situation, obviously the situation out in our world uh, today, which uh, <clears throat> trying to ignore it and trying to ignore that it exists in our equation does not seem to help, but we, we just have to accept the situation that we are going through. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a problem that we as, we as men, we need to be bringing a solution because God has invested in us the knowledge and has invested in us his word so that we, we explore spiritual impartations and the solution to address the issues of this world. It's unfortunate that many souls have departed from this world not willingly and not because they were found on the wrong side of their lifespan, but simply because um, everything happens on earth because of God's reasoning and uh, everything happens at its own time as the word of God yet told us that there are times for everything. So many souls have departed from this earth and the souls, my soul and your soul, know it very well that one day, one time, one month, one year, we shall depart. Right, anyway. Uh, can I also uh, congratulate myself for supporting a team, a football team that is always doing wonders. Liverpool, um, myself and all you Liverpoolians all over the world, it's our time. We have waited this for 30 years. So I think you will agree with me that this is our time. Yes, every dog has its day. So well, we, we got it this time. Anyway, um, I'm just going straight to the word of the Lord. I'm so excited this morning because... There is nothing to me more exciting than uh, knowing who I serve and then talking about a subject that seemed to be benefiting me a lot. That seemed to be, um, that is more of a blessing. I, I feel so much blessed whenever I talk about David, uh, a man after God's heart. I, I feel so much blessed because there, there is more that I learned from David because David I think he was just one of us. He was just like us. He's a, he's a man who saw the West. He's a man who, who sinned. He's a man who, who acknowledged his shortcomings and setbacks, and he never dwelled in them. Whenever David went wrong, what I like or what I liked about him is that he never made it his dwelling place. He moved on. So that's the characteristic, one of them that I'm picking from David. And as such, when I talk about this subject this, this morning, I feel so much uh, blessed and so much exalted and so much uh, articulate and so much uh, kind of engrossed in God's presence because there is no way to me where I feel God's presence than in his house. And I remember David saying, uh, he was glad when they said to him, let us go to the house of the Lord. Uh, which to me suggests that David wasn't going to the house of the Lord. That means there were people that were saying to David or that were convincing David that let us go to the house of the Lord. And this message 
appears to have been a revelation to David because when he was asked to go to the house of the Lord, he knew that how the house of the Lord is the only place where you can find your peace, where you can find your joy, where you can find your strength. And such is the reason that when David went to the house of the Lord, he found favor in the eyes of the Lord and he worshipped God, he praised God, he came into his courts with praise and he came into his gates with worship and thanksgiving because David had a purpose when he came to the house of the Lord. So it is my attitude. You know, when I come to the house of the Lord, I, I carry or I actually inhibit an attitude in me that allows me to say, I am going to my father. I am going to the house of the Lord. I am going to a place, a destiny of my belonging. I am going to where I belong. The house of the Lord to me is a revelation. His sanctuary where many people are meeting uh, together he is blessing a place where when a way and when we come together to worship him and to seek his presence it is more refreshing this morning uh, for me to talk about this because where i am here now and where you are now the presence of the lord is just combated is just engrossed this place and believe me you god is omnipresent god is everywhere God is where you are. God is here. God is omnipotent. He is more powerful. God can fight for you where you are. It's just a prayer away for God to bless you. It's just a prayer away. It's just a worship away for God to be present in your place, in your house, in your car, if you are driving, in your library, whatever you are doing. It's just a prayer away from God's presence. So I am seeking his presence even this morning because I can't do without his presence. You know what? I do feel God's presence this morning because he is in me and he says, being in me makes him greater. He says, greater is he that is within me than the one that is without. So which obviously it suggests to me that my in being is the one that is joyful, is the one that feels so exalted when it comes to the presence of the Lord. There is no place such as the place where we worship the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm humbled this morning to talk about, I mean, to, to, to dwell a little bit in talking about worship i'm just gonna dwell in worship and um my title this uh, morning is going to be um forget not god's benefits simple as all that but i think this is this is more about the the worship it's more about the worship that um that the the only way that we can express ourselves or the gratitude or the love that god has done for us the only way which I, I personally think that can express our appreciation to what God has done for us is um, not forgetting, is to remember. It's remembering where you took us from. It's remembering that it's been a journey. It's remembering that God loved the world so much that he gave so that when he had given, we would not be exposed to eternal death. But we will get back to him where we were before, when he made us, when he created us. So it's not forgetting his benefits. Whenever I'm reading the book, uh, my, my, my uh, key scripture this morning is coming from the book of Psalms. Uh, the Psalm, the 103rd Psalm, that's Psalm 103 from verse 1. I'll be just going down with uh, Psalm 103. In Psalm 103, what I like about Psalm 103 is that David is giving the whole of himself. He is giving the whole of himself to God. He is doing something that is against all odds. He is swimming against the tide. He is behaving or presenting himself in a manner that is contrary to his life at the moment when he was, uh, when this uh, hymn or oh, um, psalm was written. So this is David's song. 
He, this is David's worship. But what I like about this David's worship is that he is giving himself to God without any urology, without anything to do with his self and his ego. But he is giving himself fully to God for God to look at him as a man and to judge him. So, um, very interesting. Whenever I read the, 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 the 103 of Psalms, I, 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 reflect, I reflect to myself and think, um, you know, this morning when I was, uh, when I was preparing to, to, to uh, come and deliver this word, um, trying to find something to, uh, to, to dress up and make myself uh, presentable, um, because coming coming to to the presence because presence requires me to be kind of to be fully equipped to be apt to be clean to be smart to be representable to be in my best so when I was preparing trying to find something to wear I've got one of my lovely shirts that I, I, I like so much it's, it's um, so I was really delighted when I found it I said, oh my god this shirt I, I love it but then um, I think I think that shirt is is, is somehow escaped or he has left me i don't know whether i've left it or he's left me it actually didn't go down well with me and my wife said you know what when you go when you go to the presence of the lord you really need to wear something that makes you more flexible something that you, you will be flexible in when you worship god when you lift up your arms we don't want to hear the buttons uh breaking when you're lifting up your arms we don't want to see some discomfort when you, you you're worshiping the lord when you're lifting up your arms to praise the lord i remember a sister of mine i see her all the time when she goes to church she likes the stilettos stilettos whatever they call them you know the high hills but I, I don't know how she navigates her way when she's worshiping and when she's praising she will be jumping she will be jumping then somehow sometimes I do find that she actually takes off those still waters and she'll be jumping on her feet because when she comes to the presence of the Lord I know she has got a different perception of God's presence you know when she goes there she needs time she needs space she doesn't need neighbors that will look at her and judge her and limit her and make her feel uncomfortable because she's there she's not there for anyone's comfort so I realize and I do see her every time when she comes to the presence of the Lord she does all her best I don't know how you do it, my sister, but I I always fight to create an environment and a platform where whenever I come to the house of the Lord, I have myself, uh, I get myself ready. I have all that it takes for me to worship the Lord and to praise the Lord without minding who is watching me, without minding what they think about me, without minding what they say about me, with only my, my mind focused on him that has created me, focusing on the creator. Um, so... I'm, I'm, I'm talking about, uh, contextually, I'm talking about the benefits that we, we shouldn't forget when, when God has blessed us. That is what David is actually connotating to. He's saying in, in the book of Psalms 103, he's saying to God, he's bringing back to God what belongs to God. He's, that's, this is himself, the whole of himself. The Bible says in um, John chapter 3, verse 16, um, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, so that whoever believes in the son will not perish, will not die forever, will not expire, but will have everlasting life. So um, it, is, it is God's measure, it is God's thinking, and it is God, it's in God's plan that we come back to him to enjoy the eternity, to have that eternity in our lives. It's God's uh, focus that we return, we be reconciled to him so that we enjoy the eternity with him, which is what he has actually blessed us with. I will just uh, go through because of, of my time being time conscious. Let me just go through the book of uh, Psalms 103 and uh, see what David says uh, about this praise and worship, about us not forgetting the benefits that God has blessed us with. Right. In the first verse, David says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. I like it. Let me let me just just pick this from my from my from my version, my my Bible version, and and uh, Psalms 103. I like it when it's done. Let me just pick it from my version without actually picking up from the from my notes. Uh, Psalm 103. Praise the Lord. Okay, that's my King King James version. I'm reading from the King James version. Praise the Lord, O my soul, 
all my inmost being praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul. You know when we say praise the Lord, when David was saying praise the Lord, he is referring to putting God where he belongs. You know, when you, when you pray someone, you, you are actually exaggerating his original form. When you are praising me, you are saying, oh, that's wonderful, that's excellent. You know, you've just done the best thing, so, I, mean, so, I mean, so far, this is the best that we have seen from you. Or you are actually watching a football match and someone does some skills or some dribbles. Then you say, that's the best that I've seen from that guy, that's excellent. So you are praising, you are actually uh, making a narrative that best describes that person in a way or in a form that satisfies your inner being. So when David says, um, bless, praise the Lord or bless the Lord, O oh, my soul. He is saying, O oh, my soul. He is addressing his soul. He is addressing his mind. He is saying to his mind, I am in church now. What is my business? I am before the Lord now. What is my business? My business is to praise the Lord. My business is to worship the Lord with all my strength. My business is to praise He. You know, you tell your mind what to do. When you are in church, you tell your soul. You command it. You condition it to be in a way that actually promotes the interaction between the Holy Spirit and yourself to flow flawlessly so that you and the Holy Spirit are together. So that whatever God is interced interceding, whatever God is saying, whatever God is delivering in His house is head is, is, is actually benefited by the inner man. So he said, praise the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. All that is within me. All the body parts, everything that is, that is within me. Uh, our very life, essentially, our self is engrossed within the delightful service of praise and worship. Our being, when we praise the Lord, that means I am saying my hands, lift yourself up, lift yourself up. This is the master, this is the maker. And when I'm in the house of the Lord, I know that I have to do all that I can with all my might, with all my mind, with everything that I have. I have to do all that I can to worship. I have to express it in a way that God is going to find delight in me, that God's presence is going to find delight in me. And even when I lift up my hands and say and sing to the Lord, and saying to the Lord, it, it, it brings me laughter. It brings me laughter when I'm before the Lord. When I'm in His presence, because there's nothing, there's nothing better in my life other than God's presence. When I'm lifting up my hands and say, "Praise the Lord, praise His holy name, praise His name." And all that is within me, my bones crack, my liver, my heart beat faster, my arms lift high, my feet jump, everything about me, praise his holy name. And I know that in my father's house is the place where I feel the comfort of praising the Lord. When, when, we, when, we, when, we, when we praise the Lord, when we do the ministry, or when we're in the ministry of praise, we convey it by means of singing. And we say, in my, in, in my, father's, like, in my, father's, in my father's house, there is a place for me. There is a place for me. I, know how people, I don't know how people take this for. People are looking at this and saying, in my father's house, which is in heaven, there's a place for me. Of course, we do know that. But in my father's house, where I am on earth today, there is a place for me. There is a place for me to worship. I have no fear or dread. When I'm here, I, 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 I sing. When I hear, I know that in my father's, yes, there's a place for me. Yes, for me. Yes, sir. Yeah. In my father's house, I say, in my father's house, where I am, there's a place for I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. 
I don't know. I don't. You, I mean, you are missing it. In my father's house, to me, what this narrates or what this implies is, wherever I am, is a place. There is a place for me to express myself. How much I love God. Wherever I am, there is a place for me to be juvenile, to be to be happy, to be excited, to be to be lulilating, to be clapping my hands, to make all the discomfort to everyone that is around me. Because I'm in my father's house. You know, when you're in your father's house, you lose it. When you're in your father's house, you say whatever you want. You open all the doors of the refrigerator. You eat whatever you want. It's your father who tells you, stop it. But the more he tells you to stop it, the more you do it. The more it, people look at you, the more I jump. The more people look at me, the more I worship the Lord. The more people look at me and condemn me and judge me and describe me and define me. I know that what my father has said because my Redeemer said, I am fearfully and wonderfully mad. Sometimes don't wonder when people look at you when you are worshipping. They look at you like you are mad. And we jumping. I am free. I am free. I am free to be the servant of the Lord. I am free. I am free. Because I am free. I am free to be serving God. I am free to be serving God in his house. I am not in God's house for anyone's comfort. I am in God's house to worship the Lord, to give him praise. All that is in within me, praise the Lord. We should render or present our bodies as a living sacrifice in God's altar. When we come before the Lord, we are giving our whole bodies. Do you know why God gave us these bodies? Do you know? He gave us, he gave us these bodies for a good purpose, for a good reason. He gave us this voice, this, this, vo this voice to worship him. He gave us these arms to lift them up and to worship him, to work for him. He gave us this body to come before him, to present them as a living sacrifice. You know, he didn't give us this body to add the numbers in church, but he gave us this body to worship him in spirit and truth. You have to pardon me, I'm taking off my coat because, you know, when you're in the presence of the Lord, you know, sometimes you lose it and you begin to jump and say, here am I, oh God, I come to you as I am. When you say you are coming to God as you are, you are bringing the whole self. That means every part of your body is submitting to God, is giving in to God, is saying, God, today is just you. My praise and my worship is not determined by my, my wallet. My praise and my worship is not determined by the size of my house. My praise and my worship is not determined by my body. My praise and my worship is not determined by the people around me. But my praise and my worship is determined by the love of God. That he loved me and he called me and said, Come, son, come unto me, all of you who are heavily laden. I'm going to give you rest. He has given me the rest. As such, I'm going to use his, this body for the benefit of his worship in his house. Because God is a loving creator. Our, our, our focus should be on him because he is a loving creator. He is, a, he is intellectual, emotional, and practical in all aspects given to us. All these things to understand that when we come to him, we come to him with all of us. All of our bodies. All of our minds. We, 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 we try to, to close everything. To shut out everything. That is destabilizing. That is coming on our way. You know, if there are things that are following you, you're thinking a lot of things, your mind will never rest. If you come to church with a mind that is not shabagashatanabagashia, if you come to church with your mind that is not, not nailed down in the first thing in the morning and pray to God, you just wake up and eat and do bits and this and that and that and expect to come to the presence of the Lord, your mind is just going to pick up a lot of things. Tell your mind to submit. Tell it to reform. Tell it to change and say, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. So I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made and I will be glad and rejoice in it. There's, there's, there's nothing that makes me so proud about um, as much as worshiping the Lord. There's nothing that makes me so intrig intrigued, Some, nothing that makes me so excited other than worshiping the Lord, other than loving the Creator, other than totally giving myself fully to Him. 
So we should bring and arouse our hearts to his engagement. Even when others minimize or even when others forbid, we want to cry and say, bless the Lord. There are people out there who are blessing other lords. There are people out there who are worshiping other idols. There are people out there who are saying stuff about other people and make them their gods. But I'm making my God, my creator. I am making him. I am making him my first and foremost. He's, he's my loving God. His, David says, praise the Lord, O my soul. Why? Because David's soul had suffered. In, in Psalms 51, David came before the Lord. He had sinned, he had erred, and said, God, to you alone have I sinned. To you alone have I sinned. He has learned, I think sometimes we should learn to say sorry to God. Don't, don't be sorryful to men. Don't be sorryful to men. Men will never forget. You disappoint him, they look at you tomorrow. Don't think that they love you. Don't think that they've forgotten about what you did to them. They never. They always remember what you did to them. But I know that there is only one man who has sinned against, who when he says he has forgotten, he truly has forgotten. I know that God, my Redeemer, lives. When he says he's forgotten, he's forgotten. That's why when I come to him, I say, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me, my intestines, all that is within me, my breath, all that is with me, within me, bless the Lord. David said, bless the Lord and all that is within me. We suggest that he's conformed his verbal praise to the Lord and putting his whole body, his heart, his feet, and everything to the submission of the Lord. So that when he is praising God, all he is doing, he is just saying, God, here am I. And when God looks at David, I think he says, I can see you. I don't know going to be asking me like what he did when he was asking uh, Samuel. Um, he was saying, I, I can see, I can see all that you have killed all the all the, the rams and all the cows and all the flock and the custody. But what is it that I hear? What is it that I hear from the background? Mewing like cats, meh like gods. What is it that I can hear? You see, I don't want God to say, what is it that I can see in your mind? I can see you are here in church, but what is it that I can see? I want my mind to be conformed to the presence of the Lord. I don't want any of my body parts to make an awkward voice in the presence of the Lord. I want everything about me to be conformed to the presence of the Lord. So that I say, God, here am I. I am your son. I am forgiven. I am forgiven. That's why I'm here. Here am I, Lord. I am forgiven. That's why I'm here. I am loved. That's why I'm here. That's all that matters to me. When we say bless his holy name, we come to an understanding that reveals God's character. When we say bless his holy name, we are describing God's holiness. By the way, he is the only one. He is the only holy being God. He is the only holy being. Think of the songs that we sing sometimes when we say, Lord, Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. We say, Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Do you really know what you mean when you say, Lord, you are good? And your mercy endure forever. Your mercy, his mercy is what lets you get away with it. When you thought you got away with it, it's his mercy. His mercy is what let you get away, get away with your sins. His mercy is what made you to get away with your in your 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 miscoming, your shortcomings, all, all your all your faults. God accepted you as you are because of his merciful kindness. So that's why we say, excuse me, Lord, you are good. And your mercy endures forever. In, 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 in verse 2, when David says, And uh, forget not all his benefits. That's, that's what I like most. Forget not all his benefits. You know, um, I've lived many years now. And I've, I've, I've seen God work uh, wonders in my life. But equally, I think I've, I've suffered a lot 
physically, spiritually, I have suffered a lot. I have experienced all, all aspects of, of, of dilemmas. And I've been in position that sometimes I, I've been alarmed uh, to see myself uh, moving on uh, without falling apart, especially considering what I've gone through. But on the other side of the fence, I always remember what God has done to me and what God has done for me. And um, I, I really, I, I can't, I can't by all means uh, ignore the, the, the fact that God picked me from the mud. God picked me from nothing and made me who I am. I'm not proud of who I am, not because um, I've, I've done anything in my own making, but I, I believe that God has, has actually taken me from somewhere and put me where I am today. So when I say I don't, I don't want to forget what God has done for me, I don't want to forget his blessings. When, when, when I'm going all through these difficult times or when I'm unwell or when things aren't working at all, I always remember the good things that he has done for me. The uh, counselors and therapeutic advisors will always say, do you want to think about the times when everything was good? The, whenever you're going through stress, you want to take your life, your suicide, or... You just want to leave it, just want to let go. You want to go for divorce. You are just thinking all, all about what is probably best for you to do it because things aren't working or things are not, ends are not meeting. They, they always ask you, those who support or those that help people, they always try to ask you that, do you, do you want to remember about the times when things were right do you want to remember about the times when you were nothing and when this woman picked you from nowhere and made you what you are do you want to remember the best times that you were together with your wife or with your girlfriend do you want to remember the best times you and your friend were together we would go out and have fun and um, have that sense of love and belonging and uh, so they, they, they are trying to capture the best and trying to capture the positives from, from the negatives that you are presenting so that they wake from the positives. So um, every time when I come to God, when I come in his presence, I always want to mention the best things that he has done for me. I always want to mention about the benefits, the, 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 the reasoning, the resonance that I'm here because he loved me, because he healed me. I'm here because he actually he put his life on the wire because of my own soul. So... Um, not uh, so much uh, as to one of the divine dealings, but uh, just to forget about what, what, what God has done uh, to you will obviously take you off the mark, will obviously take you off your feet uh, from knowing uh, when it's best for you to worship the Lord or from doing the best from the Lord. Because sometimes we repay God based on what the good he has done for us. But now in this context, what I'm talking about is when you come to God, when you are ill and you come to God, when you have lost your 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 your, your wealth or you've lost your family or you've lost any 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 people, then you say, well, you come to God and with, with, uh, with the thought that, you know what, I appreciate God is the maker, God is the creator, but you know, I've gone through difficult times. There's not much I can offer you, God. I, I can just, I'll just sing, I'll just put my hands on my pocket, I'll just worship you, I'll just speak in tongues with my hands on my pocket because I'm not satisfied, I'm not happy about what I went through. If God is there, if God is existing, where is God? You talk like Gideon and say, God, if you are there, how, how dare you call me mighty man? When I'm hiding from my enemies, how, or, or, honestly, how can you? Thank you. How can you, um, by all means necessary, say you are a mighty man of valor? Mighty man of valor, but I'm running away from my enemies. I'm scared. I, I can't even I can't even come to church because I don't have the best outfit. I can't even come to church because I can't jump like so and so. I can't even come to church because I can't sing like so and so. No ways. Don't forget the benefits that God has given you. I, I'm, I might be good in singing, but I, I can't be good in doing other things. I, might, I, can't, play, I can't play a bass guitar. When, when I, 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 I look at someone playing a, a bass guitar, I, I just play with my heart. I play with my heart just to, just to pretend like I'm playing it. You see, let, 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 the, let the weak say I'm strong. When, I, when I, I see someone playing a keyboard, I wish I would play as they play. So I just play it for my heart. I just wish I would play with them. But that does not stop me from coming and jumping because I have got what they don't have. I have got my feet to jump. I have got my arms to lift up and praise the Lord. This is all that God has given me. I don't want to forget what God has done for me. 
David remembers that God could have killed me. You know when he when he cheated when he when he killed he killed Uriah uh, because he wanted to he wanted to conceal his own sins. But God, God had seen the move. God had detected the pace. God could have killed him, could have finished him. But God, God, God spared his life. So when God has spared your own life, you know your wrongs. You know where you have gone through. You know what you have done, which you think that God didn't realize. But God knows. God knows exactly what you did. God knows exactly what you did. But don't forget the good things. Don't forget that God spared your life. Forget not his blessings. <laughs> Because most often we forget about the good things and remember about the bad things. We remember about the sufferings. We remember about the times when things were not working. But we don't forget. We forget that, no, there are times when God was blessing us and we are blessed to be in his house. We are blessed to have a platform, to have a place of worship, to have somewhere where we can go and worship. When in other people's lives, in other nations, people are not able to convey together and worship the Lord. In other places of worship, people are not allowed to call upon the name of the Lord. In other towns, in other cities or other countries, people are not allowed to have a Bible, to read the Bible. But being a Christian in a country where you have access to a Bible and access to a, 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 a place of worship, be it a pilgrim, be it a, a sanctuary, be it a, 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 a whatever tabernacle, you can go anytime and worship the Lord. You are blessed. You should appreciate this. You should love it. You, I can't afford to sit back and, and sit home and say, well, I'll be with you, by, I'll be with you, spiritual guys. I'm staying home today. I just want to chill because, uh, well, I, I've had a very terrible day at work. I can't come. No ways. David said, I would rather spend a, a, a day in the house of the Lord than thousand in a party, in a barbecue party, in a, in a beach party. I would rather be in the house of the Lord because I don't want to forget what God has done to me. I don't want to forget that I was heading to hell. And he said, hey, you stop. Where are you going? Come this way. Oh, my sins, God. My sins are red as crimson. My sins are, 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 are wearing me down. He said, come to me. In Isaiah 1 verse 18, he said, come to me. Even though your sins are red as crimson. Even though you think you have done the worst of the worst. Come to me. Ah, and He doesn't say only come to me. Look, look, listen to what I like about this. God is saying, come to me. Come, let us reason. He's calling you to come to the table. He's not, he's not calling you to come and judge you and say, well, you know, this is where you went wrong. Like what men, human beings will do. Human, 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 human approach is like, okay, I understand my brother. Okay, I understand what you're saying. But you know, I don't think I, don't think I like the way you did it. I don't, I, don't, I don't like the way you did it. You see, already he's just, he's just tackling you. Already it's just demoralizing you. It's just demotivating you. But God is saying, come, let us reason together. Though your sins are red as crimson, though you think you have turned the worst out of all the worst, come, let us reason. Let us sit, me and you. Let us talk about it. I want to remind you. I want to remind you where I took you from. And Hezekiah, even when he's buried his life and he's given 15 more years, he doesn't murmur and say, oh no, why 15? Oh God, I want to live longer. But he is appreciating, he's jumping high. He is happy that God at least has given him 15 more years to live. But God is saying to you today, come unto me, all you who've got sins, all of you who feel that your sins are red as crimson, come let us reason together. So don't forget where God has taken you from. He forgives all your sins, all of them. He forgives all my sins. David is expressing God's character. When God says, I've forgiven you, he means it. God is not like men that he can lie. Man says, I love you when he literally says, I don't like you. Men can say, you know what, I've, in my lifetime, I have never met a man like you. But at the back of their mind, they're just judging. They're just thinking, hey, this guy is out of his mind. But God is what he is. He doesn't judge you. He calls you. He reminds you of the good that he has done. He forgives you all your sins, all your iniquity, all of them, all I mean all. 
Not even one of them is left. He forgives all your sins and he presents you continually to his throne and cleanses you with his blood and makes sure that you are clean so that tomorrow when you're leaning down and you're praying to him, his perception to you, he doesn't see your sins. He doesn't see your blood, but he just sees his son, Jesus Christ, who forfeited and placed his life in our, um, uh, on, our on, on his way, he actually gave his life uh, for the redemption of our sins so that tomorrow or today and forever, when God is looking at us, all he can see is his son. Why does he love us so much? Because all he can see is his son. That's why he says, uh, uh, come unto me, if, then if you are heavily burden, then I'm just going to give you rest. I will give you my yoke, which is lighter, and I will give you rest. And he says, if you believe, you will be baptized. And if you believe, you will be saved. If you call for salvation, he is going to save you. Come unto God, and he's going to give you the best for your life. And you will know the knowledge now to come before his throne, his mess, throne of mercy and his presence, and worship him without fear and dread, and say, Lord, there's none but you Lord there is none but you Lord I I delight in, in, in praise and worship because that's when did you see most times when people are in praise and worship are in the presence of the Lord do you realize most people do shed a tear or two they we often we often we often bleed tears when we worshiping the Lord because that's where you bring your heart to be searched. That's where God will search you. Say, God, search my heart, Lord. Search my heart, Lord. Search my heart and anoint me, Lord. Search my heart. Then we play tears because we know that we know where we have gone wrong. That's when we come before his presence and say, Lord, we may, we may fool all of the people some of the time. Or we may fool some of the people all of the time. We may fool all of the people all of the time, but it's impossible. We can't fool you, Lord. We can't fool you because you know my heart. Because you know my heart. Because you can see in me, Lord. He says, my word is powerful, it's active, it's sharper than a double-edged sword. It pierces even to the asunder of the man's heart and detects his thoughts and the intents that, that it, it sees everything. God, God is in me. He can see what's in me. He can see what I'm thinking. He can see my thoughts. Even if I come before him, even if I pretend and behave as though I'm committing the whole of me, he can see me if I'm not. So when I'm worshiping, I'm saying, God, search me. Is this me? Is this me? Is this the me, Lord, that you see? Is this the me that you see? And you pray, and you worship God, and you sing with, 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 with your tongue. You use your tongue to worship the Lord, to bless the Lord, and you tune your tongue to meet God's expectations, not man's expectations, but his expectation. He said, oh God, there is none like you. There is none like you. No one else but Jesus Christ. There is none like Jesus Christ. I'm here to find a man like Jesus Christ. There is none like him. So when we worship, when I'm kneeling down on my knee, I'm not kneeling to the world. I'm kneeling to the King of Kings. I'm kneeling to the Lord of Lords, to the Lord and King of Kings, King of Kings, and say, oh God, oh God, search my heart because he has forgiven all my sin. That's why I take pleasure in worshiping the Lord. He says in, in Romans 3 verse 23, uh, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of the Lord. We have all sinned. But God said, I have forgiven all of them. In Hebrews 8 verse 12, I've just said this, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities, and I will remember no more. No more. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. Our earthly tent will be destroyed, but we are assuredly remember, reminded rather that we have an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Verse 6 of, of, of chapter 5 says, As long as we remain 
in this body, we are away from the Lord. As long as we remain in this body, we are away because he is eternal. He is imperishable. And this body is perishable. Such is the reason that when we come before his throne and we want to worship and praise him, we want to jump, this body is suppressing us. He's saying, you can't jump, man. Look at you wearing a necktie and a suit. And you want to jump? Look at you now, you sweating. Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Remember, David, David, when they said, come, let us go to the house of the Lord, he was not only happy, but he went there and he did his moves. He was jumping and he was dancing. He was dancing. And when he was dancing, he was dancing in so much that he, um, 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 you know what happened? Uh, so I, I want to think if he was wearing a suit, maybe uh, this, this suit probably uh, lost some stitches or probably something happened uh, that wasn't pleasing and the wife was not happy at all about his dancing because his dancing has actually uh, resulted in some kind of embarrassment. But now, this is David is coming before the Lord. He's, he's presenting his whole body before the Lord. He's dancing. He's making all the moves. He's, he's being very creative before the Almighty because that is where his source of power is coming from. That is the source of his inspiration. So, you shouldn't be worried because he said he heals all your diseases, all of them. Be they spiritual, be they physical, he heals all diseases. That's what God does. So, what I'm saying, I'm saying whenever we come before the Lord to worship the Lord, we should do it with all our heart. We should do it with all our hearts. Because God created us as we are. He knows us when we come to him. He knows who we look like. When he said all, he means all. So he knows exactly when you have left something in you. He knows that you have not given it all. He knows that the Bible says he redeems you from hell. He redeems you, he redeems you from death. If you are heading to death, he is saying that no way. It's not going to happen this year. No way. Even if you've got the symptoms. No way. Even if you're sneezing. No way. Even if you have a terrible headache. No way it's going to happen to you. Because he knows your frame. He knows that you are made of dust. He knows he's your creator. By the way, he crowns you with love and mercy. He knows how he can keep you going. He knows how he can make you go stronger. He knows how he can direct you. He knows your frame. He knows your making. He knows that one day, one day you shall leave this flesh which is jeopardizing you. We shall leave this flesh which is restricting you from jumping and thanking him and saying, Oh God, yeah, I want to dwell in your house. I want to be in your house forever. I want to dwell in your house. I want a place, Lord, in your house. I want, I want us to worship. I want us to worship. I want us to worship because the word of God is the word of God is action. The word of God is about worship. It's about worshiping him. It's about seeking him. It's about wanting him. It's about showing yourself off to him. It's about bring and presenting yourself as a living sacrifice unto him and saying, God, look at me. Look at the inner me. Look at my making. Look at my frame, Lord. I come before you, Lord. I come before you as I am because I am your son. Because I am your son. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I just want to come to a time of prayer now. I just want to pray now. I just want to thank God now for this worship. I just want to thank God for this time of worship and say, God, create, create more worship in our lives. Create more willingness to worship you. Make everything come right for us as you have made everything come right to your people when they, they were moving. When in the times of Exodus, when they were moving from the land of captivity to their land of eternity, I want, I want to create that spirit and atmosphere of worship and praise. No murmuring, no complaint. But I want to create I want to create in you a spirit of worship a spirit of praise and lifting up my arms and lifting up my whole body and lifting up the whole body and say here I am Lord here I am Lord here I am Lord here I am to worship you here I am to worship you here I am here I am Jesus here I am 
Here I am to praise you. Here I am to worship you. Here I am to say you are my my God. Oh, oh, together. Come on. With me. Oh, all together. All together. Oh, all together. And worship the Lord without shame. Worship the Lord without any embarrassment. Whether I can or I can't. Whether I can do it or I can't. I want to worship the Lord without fear. And say, Lord, here I am. Here I am to worship you. Here I am to praise you. Here I am to say, you are my God. Here I am to say, you alone are my God. I want to say it in prayer. I want you to say this in prayer. I want you to pray while you're singing and say, Oh, Lord, here I am. I'm a sinner. But you, Lord, you forgive me my sins. I was lost. But now I'm found. I confess my sins. I confess my sins, Lord. Here I am, here I am, Lord. Love me as I am. Wash my sins away, oh Lord. Clean my body, Lord. Like when I come before you, Lord, you can see Jesus in me. Jesus in me, you can see Jesus. Jesus in me, Jesus in me. Lord, forgive my sins. Oh, love me as I am, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you, Lord. I want to thank you for this precious moment. I want to thank you for your presence. I want to thank you for your love and your touch, Lord. I want to thank you for reminding us to remember all the benefits, to remember the blessings, Lord, to remember the benefits that we, we attained from you, God, to remember the times when things were bad, but you lifted us from the mud and you blessed us, oh God. I pray for a soul that is lost. I pray for someone out there who's saying, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm praying for someone out there who's saying, Lord, touch me. Touch my, touch my heart, Lord. Make me new, Lord. Clean me. Refresh me, God. I pray for a soul that is repenting today. A soul that is seeking you. A soul that wants to get changed. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your move. And thank you for touching us. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. There is none like you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to thank you again. Before I just wrap this up, I know there's someone out there. I know there's someone who's so desperate of this, who wants to partake of what we are partaking already, who wants to say, Lord, have mercy. I'm just going to, I'm not going to close without without giving you an opportunity because it is my, my obligation to give you an opportunity to turn away from your sins and to say, God, here I am. I'm coming to you. I'm a sinner. Pray with me. Pray with me now. Just close your eyes, wherever you are. Are you at home watching television? Are you watching me from Facebook? Wherever you're watching me from, just say this short, very short prayer with me. Say, Father God, thank you this morning. I come to you. I don't come to a church. I come to you. Look at my heart. Forgive me of all my sins. Make me your child. Cleanse me, make me new in the name of Jesus. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. And I want to tell you that if you have done this prayer, don't minimize it, don't take it for granted. It is an important decision that you are making in your life. God is already taking you from a certain stage to another level. It's left for you now to act on your words, to seek Him and to seek His benefits. Go to a church, go to a living church 
and pray to a living God and God is going to bless you. I want to thank you for listening and I want to say again, tune in again next week and hear from the Lord as we continue to minister unto the Lord online and making sure that we, are, we have all access to speak to God and all access to hear from God for he loves us forever and ever. Amen. Thank you again. God bless you. Amen. Thank you.